this is Maru and Tatiana, hello. And we are very happy to be here. We are uh, continuing our open discussions on the topics that we find interesting and fascinating. And continuing about the theme of femininity, yeah. I talked to Tati what could be the theme of this video today. And uh, I have a friend, she just got married, and she was having this question and this dilemma, like, I'm a married woman now, does that mean that I should drop on my femininity, on taking care of the way I look? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, so, I mean, it, I think for you and I it's evident, like... Yeah, uh, but the thing is, like, what does she mean by taking care of herself and caring about her femininity? Maybe you have just, like, different perspective, maybe... It's like something special she was doing to attract a man or something. What, what, what does she mean? I think it means more in, in the Latina world. Yeah. Normally when you're single you pay a lot of attention of the way you look, and your mini skirts, your makeup, your high heels. And as soon as you are married or in the, you know, the years pass and the relationship develops. And then many women become more um, sedentary, like they are at home. Uh, sitting in the couch watching telenovelas, uh, <laughs> winning weight, and I think um, it's a bit of the status quo in many many families. So I think that's what she meant. That you know, okay, I'm now married. I need to take care of my home, but I still want to keep my old self. Okay. Uh, like for me, maybe the two main points again from your explanation is that. Uh, Latina girls are big fans of short skirts, <laughs> high heels, yes. and you know, like being sexy in general. Yes. Maybe for people from other countries, even like over the over the top sexy. Mm, yeah. Well, for us it's normal, but how do you see that? Yeah. But like for me, it's like the only issues that might uh, rise when you get married. So when you're being too, too sexy outside the home, yeah. you might get <laughs> a, a very <laughs> jealous man. <laughs> hmm. That's an interesting perspective. Yeah. It's, it's also a matter of the man being able to cope with you stripping you the same. Because I've seen this in Mexico. It's true that uh, some husbands prefer their wives to maybe be less attractive or, or just just for me, you know, I know what I have at home, but don't show it outside. Yeah, I think it's like a universal rule, <laughs> kind <laughs> of, yes. that men would love, like to have. But in a way, yeah, it's actually like not that, that bad a thing to do, to be not super sexy and not to attract too much attention outside your house. Do you think they should um, be? I mean, if you like wearing a short skirt, mm -hmm. you should be allowed to. Yeah. But uh, everything comes with consequences. Yeah. If you're wearing a short skirt, you're getting a lot of attention. Some some people are nice to you. Some people might get yeah, different signals. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So if uh, the thing is, for me, you should just be ready to cope with it. If mm -hmm. uh, you're aware that you're wearing a short skirt, I, I'm not trying in any way to say that like it uh, uh, gives a man a right to mm -hmm. to, <laughs> yeah, to do anything, to do anything to do he wants with you. That, yeah, no. that's important to point that out. Yeah, yeah but uh, you need to be ready that you're going to get lots of attention. So. Yeah, I guess that's like a normal thing for a husband not to be a big fan of. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Especially if you live somewhere where it's not that safe to get this attention. In Mexico, at least, it was more before. I remember when I left my country, I came to the Netherlands. It was still that you should be careful wearing skirts or, you know, very feminine clothes in the metro because you would be touched or get comments now I must admit these years it has been improved and oh, it's so getting less and less um, but I, I tru truly believe it's about your personal belief I, I, I really believe a woman should in any case become this fodonga this what I told you in the first video the, the woman that doesn't take care of herself that just in pajamas yeah. the whole day because that for me is some sort of abandonment 
Yeah, that's true, and I totally agree with it. But I also don't think that uh, like the only way to stay attractive and mm -hmm. to stay feminine is, is to wear something super extra sexy, um, mm -hmm. like in this way. And on the other hand, you can go for something which is sexy, but a bit more, I don't know, has... I don't want to say has more class to it, because a short uh, skirt doesn't make you like lower class or anything, but uh, when you can be very sexy wearing a long dress. Yeah, and in the end what, what's sexy, I yeah. think sexy is a feeling. Yeah. And the feeling of being a woman, the attractive woman, and you see some women that really age gracefully, and even at their 70s they are still looking very attractive. Yeah, that's true. And it doesn't mean that they are wearing like the same stuff they were yes. <laughs> wearing when they were, they were 20. Yeah. yeah, yeah, true. So yeah. basically, you can just go for another silhouette, like some different fabrics, mm -hmm. accentuate your figure in different ways. In different not, ways. Not yeah. not necessarily push up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not, not necessarily super uh, super short. Not it super might be tight. like medium height. It might be like midi skirt. Yeah. And you know, a blouse with no push up but a nice decollete in it. Yes. Or not, not decollete at all, but like showing your wrists or showing your neck. Mm -hmm. So yeah. these are all yeah. different and very sexy parts of women. So just maybe we have to focus on the conventional sexy image. Yeah, and it varies from country to country. For, for example, in Arabic countries, you are not allowed to show anything. In Asian, in Asian, Asian countries, hair. it's totally fine to wear like super mini skirt, yes. but you're not allowed to show any of the decorative hair. Exactly, for example. So it's like yes. a very simple cultural difference, but yeah, that's, you, that's how it is. Yeah, so in one hand respecting the protocol or the conventional things, on the other hand being true to yourself and just wearing what you feel like it suits you better. Yeah and what you feel the most comfortable with because um, we both are married women and uh, <laughs> my friend is also a married woman and I think the biggest mistake a woman can do is to lose herself for, for a man. Yeah. I mean, even if it's your husband, you need to remain the vibrant self that you were when he met you. Yeah, that's true. I think that's a problem um, that is like very common amongst women that yes. we just try to diffuse into this relationship and we yeah. kind of lose the essence of what, what person we were before. Yes. And that's actually kind of unfair deal for the husband as well because he, he went to the relationship with this girl. Yes. She had her own interests, she had her own like... Her own life. Her own goals. Yeah. yeah. And then suddenly she's just like, oh, I, I'm just here around you. And Nothing depending more, on you. Yeah, nothing more about me. Yes, I remember um, when I shared this on the camera, like when I came to the Netherlands, it was like a new life for me. It was as if I was born again. You know, I didn't know the language, I didn't have any friends. Yeah. It was a totally new environment. So at the beginning, I was just hanging on my husband all the time and um, I depended on him for everything. I yeah. felt like a baby. Yeah, and not only like money-wise, but you also didn't have anyone to talk to. No. So he had to become your world. Yeah, he was my world and it was kind of asphyxiating for him in a way that he said, okay, go and dance. And now that's where I, I started my career as a dancer because uh, I created my own network and I started having my own friends. and. And now I'm the one, I mean, he of course has his friends, but I, I have plenty of friends as well, thank you. And also for school, I met yeah. the great, the great friends. So and many people have told me, okay, you are an example of, of somebody that doesn't stay just at home and be depressed. And it's about you wanting to do things. Yeah, and that's true. And just well. believing that you can do it. As yes. Well. Because yes. it's not only like the success story you read from someone, it's just normal people, just yes. like me and you, and yeah. they just go for it and get it. And get it done, and get it done. So for my friend, I'm not going to reveal your name, but I know you're watching us. So be yourself and be happy, be vibrant, stay young in body and mind. And I hope this conversation inspires you to just continue being yourself no matter what people say. Because of course, there's also another part, the surrounding, and maybe the family in law that has some comments. You should do that. I have heard actually in the Netherlands, as soon as a woman has a baby, and in Japan it happens as well, they should cut their hair. 
don't really yeah because they should become practical and then there's no time for for that uh, actually there is this thing that was mentioned by uh, an anthropologist a Russian woman uh, she researches into like history and uh, all, all that's like kind of the things that people were doing before and so uh, there was like a thing that uh, traditionally a woman didn't cut her hair but mm -hmm. she would start to wear a bun okay. instead mm -hmm. of wearing her hair loose like this okay. uh, and she said oh maybe it's like the thing that men to do to repress a woman to make uh, to show everybody that she's like has a family now, mm. she's married and she cannot show off her hair anymore. Mm. And she said, like, I had these thoughts when I was very young, but as soon as I got my first child, mm -hmm. I understood nothing, nothing of it is that tr true, actually. Mm -hmm. It's a very practical thing when you have a kid, mm -hmm. it touches your hair. Okay. Yes, and yes. you know, those little hands can be very strong, <laughs> <laughs> it can be a very painful. Yes, well. and also so, I've heard that it can damage the hands, baby. Yeah, baby so hands. actually, like, doesn't really matter if you like it loose or not. If you have a little baby around, you need to. You need, like, nowadays yeah. they cut it, yes. or you wear a bun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, become more yeah. <laughs> you become more practical, but it's not in a bad way. It just your life changes. You enter a different stage, and like, yeah. somehow you manage to stay exactly the same. Nobody's going to blame you. But if you're changing, nothing is bad about it. Just be nice to yourself, take care of yourself. Yes, be remain true to your essence and I think that's the important message that we want to, to discuss here. Like uh, at the end of the day happiness is important and for me authenticity is also very important. So just to follow your own way yeah. and not really the trend or what people expect. Of course with the context of respect but I think that's for me at least what has worked yeah there is no recipe for happiness it is going to work out for everybody yes so basically it doesn't really it doesn't really mean anything what uh, society expects from you or what even like sometimes your closest big people expect from you you just need to feel it for yourself also sometimes we just got caught up so that much you know thoughts Mm -hmm. is stop feeling. Sometimes a good advice from a friend or from a family member can help you to feel this. Yes. Yeah, just like try not to go too far one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah, it's indeed. Of course the insight help, but as that is just say stay true to those those feelings and the feeling. The feeling that's yeah. the most important. So I hope this, this is inspiring, please give us your, your comments, we love to hear from you and uh, the next video will be in the same line of self-care and uh, yeah, beauty. See you soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye.